Hey everyone, this is Rostick, and I'm here to give you the hurricane survival list, like material kind of thing you would need in case you would have to evacuate your house if a hurricane or tropical system uh, threatened um, your area. So uh, what I pretty much did is over the past couple days, I just got like a list together and I have it on a PDF right here. So I'm just going to pretty much say what you would need to bring. Um, these are like the mandatory things you would have to bring if you actually have to leave your house and go elsewhere because of, again, a tropical system um, that's going to affect your area. So first and foremost, food and water, <laughs> obviously. You gotta bring them. Um, so for water, it's gonna need to be bottled water, obviously. And this is kind of like the rule of thumb. It's one gallon per person per day for at least two weeks. So up to 14 days. So one gallon per person per day for 14 days. So that's what you need to do for water. And again, it has to be bottled. And it can be a gallon of water. It can be like smaller like half gallons or just water bottles, but it needs to equal about a gallon for one person for a day and again up to 14 days. So that's what you'll need to do for water. Um, bring a mechanical, I mean not mechanical, obviously, <laughs> manual can opener, one that you'd have to actually um, do like by hand and stuff. Uh, and the reason why you would want to do that is because when you bring food along, you need to bring essentially non-perishable foods. So anything that's canned, pretty much. So canned meat, canned fish, fruit, and vegetables. Um, if you're gonna bring bread, they need to be in moisture-proof packaging. Um, you can bring cookies, candy, and dried fruit. Uh, for for milk, it also needs to be canned. You don't want to have like a gallon because it's gonna go bad after a couple days. Obviously, especially if it's hot and humid where you're going, um, it's just going to spoil. So you need to bring canned milk. And you got to um, obviously bring canned soup as well. That's like a big thing uh, that people do tend to bring. Um, powdered or single serve drinks. Uh, cereal bars are fine. You can bring packaged condiments, obviously. Peanut butter and jelly. That's a, actually um, one of the top things that people will bring for non-perishable foods. And then instant coffee, tea, those sites those sorts of things as well. So that's pretty much what you would want to bring for food. And all, again, all this is non-perishable. So those are pretty much the highlights on food. Now for supplies, um, just like everyday supplies that you would need, obviously a flashlight. <laughs> um, and one flashlight per person. So obviously if you have five people in your family, five flashlights. Good. Um, portable battery powered lanterns, which are also uh, pretty good. Uh, glass enclosed candles. Um, not You cannot use them um, in shelters though because I'm pretty sure they don't allow them. Um, so if you're going to go to a shelter you can't bring them but if you're going over to like a friend's house or something obviously you can bring it. Um, and a lot of this stuff again is in case you go to a shelter but then again not everything on the list that I am going to mention um, is used, um, can be used in the shelter, but pretty much all this stuff can. Just the glass enclosed candles can't be. Um, I don't know why. <laughs> battery powered radio or TV. Um, you can also have a battery operated alarm clock, obviously. Um, bring batteries. Uh, oh yeah, it says extra batteries. Um, and then you can also, um, an ice chest and ice for cooling purposes. And Actually, no, I should have mentioned this, like, along with the food and water, but a first aid kit, people. You need a first aid kit. That's essential. Um, antibiotics, aspirin, any creams, any antiacids, any of that. So, first aid kit, bring it. You can bring it anywhere. Um, sunscreen, waterproof stuff in case you... Um, in case like other things get wet so just seal them up in bags um, obviously bring money um, credit card and cash both would be fine and stuff um, so that's what you would pretty much need for 
uh, supplies. You can also bring disposable plates, glasses, any utensils that you have. And always um, bring a map of like the area that you're going to with landmarks on it so you know how to get around in case you don't know the area familiar. Um, so you would need to do that as well. So on to cooking. Um, portable stove or grill, and it needs to be like a camp stove or grill. Disposable eating utensils, plates and cups, obviously. Napkins and paper towels to clean up. Aluminum foil and oven mitts. Duh, or else you're going to burn your hand off. I've tried doing that before. It's not fun. Um, that's for cooking. Personal supplies, you need prescriptions. Like a one month, like a 30 or 60 day month prescription, pretty much. Photocopies of your prescriptions would help in case anything gets like lost. Um, toilet paper, obviously. You can bring entertainment like books, magazines, cards, games, etc. Any of that. Um, soap and detergent, obviously, to wash clothes and all that. Toiletries, bedding, so pillows and sleeping bags and blankets, all that stuff. Changes of clothes, obviously, um, just in case you have to stay out for more than like a week or two. Uh, obviously, you're going to want to bring a change of clothes. Uh, rain ponchos and uh, work gloves in case... Um, I don't really don't know what you have to do work gloves with. I just put it on the list. <laughs> um, and then if you wear like glasses or have contacts like I do, just bring a whole bunch of them. Bring extras in case you're going to run out. So, yes. That's what you would need for personal supplies. Baby needs, obviously, disposable, disposable diapers, and then um, food and medication, obviously, for the baby, and obviously clothes. And documents, probably, like, one of the biggest things besides, like, a first aid and water and all that food. Documents. Insurance papers. You pretty much, like, must, must have a home, automobile, and you want proof that you are a resident of your own house obviously so any type of bill you have like utility bill would be awesome and make sure that you have all of them like in a folder together and you can just get them out if you need them um so that's like probably the most important documents you'll need besides that off obviously a photo identification if you have like a passport or obviously your driver's license obviously bring that and bring copies of just bring a copy of them just in case you lose it or anything happens to it. Just bring any, just bring like two, three, five, ten, I don't know, copies of all these documents just in case they get lost. Um, you're also going to need photocopies of any types of prescriptions like medications or if you have contacts or anything, again, contacts obviously so you can get new stuff. And with the medications, you want medical history information. So just have like a write-up of any medical um history that you have or family history that you have with uh, any medication. Um, waterproof container for document storage. So put them somewhere where they're not going to get wet in case the place gets wet. Um, backup disk for your home computer files obviously so like a flash drive. And then camera and film to document any kind of damage uh, to your house or any of the belongings so that way insurance um, for insurance purposes and all that stuff. Obviously, remember to bring pet supplies, um, like canned food for about two weeks, water, um, a litter box, and a traveling cage if you have pets. Um, so that's another thing. Um, shelters do not allow pets, uh, to my knowledge. So plan to bring them to either a veterinarian or a local humane society, because um, I'm pretty sure shelters do not allow pets. And, I mean, if any of you know that, then just let me know. Obviously, I don't live, again, on the coast, so I've never had to, like, evacuate. So, I don't know. Maybe if you've had to evacuate or something, just let me know if you if shelters, have, if shelters actually allow pets or not. I don't know. I've just heard that some, some do, some don't. I don't know. Um, let me know if they actually do or not, if you actually have been in that situation before where you're in a shelter and if you have a pet, if... They are allowed in the shelter with you or if you have to leave them off at um, a veterinarian or something like that. So that's what you do with pets. And then any other like stuff, um, if you have to do any like labor work, just bring like a couple tools with you. Uh, trash bags obviously for cleaning up, um, cleaning supplies along with trash bags. Um, 
that's pretty much it. A fire a fire extinguisher in case anything goes wrong. Um, and then duct tape. Like, duct tape fixes anything. So that would be a good thing to bring as well. And then any, like, extension cords would be good as well. Um, now, this is interesting. Um, spray paint. I've heard of people spray painting their home to identify it if necessary in case it gets damaged. So you can, like, spray paint. <laughs> you can spray paint like your home and then if it gets damaged or whatever you know like how to identify it and obviously these are in places that are totally devastated by category four or five storms so that way you actually can look and see oh wait i marked mine pink and he marked his black okay so the pink stuff is mine and the black stuff is his you kind of get what i'm saying so if if homes are like if you live close to someone and your house is like obliterated or something and you want to go in and you want to pick up your belongings or whatever but you can't really see like which is like part of your house which is part of like your neighbor's house uh i've heard of people just spray painting parts of their house so that way they can identify it so that might be a good idea you can like write a i don't know a message like go away hurricane blank or or like, save us, Lord. I don't know. Um, <laughs> if you want to do that and you have to evacuate, go ahead and do that. Um, sounds actually fun. Um, maybe I want to just do that. Anyways, no, my mom would go. So, that's pretty much it. And obviously bring um, charges for like your cell phone or anything or backup batteries, any of that. So that's pretty much what my hurricane kit survival list is comprised of. You might have a different one, you might have more or less stuff, that's okay. So that's pretty much what I would bring along if I had to evacuate my home to go to either a shelter or some other place um, in case of a tropical system. So I hope that helps some. You can also check on um, on the web, obviously. Uh, just Google like hurricane survival kits. I pretty much kind of did that, but I got them from like other sources and then I just like thought of other things as well. So that's what you can pretty much do. Hopefully it helped a little bit in all that regard. So, but again, food, water, and a first aid kit and your documents are like the main big things that you would want to bring. So with that, I'm going to update you now on the weather. So I have my map obviously in the back and good news. There's no tropical systems to be heard of as of right now, and it's just the beginning of hurricane season. So, let's go to the map. And, just wanna just briefly just talk about it. Um, so, this week pretty much we have like a trough in the east, which is bringing unsettled weather across the northeast and cooler than average uh, temperatures. Uh, the rest of the south and over into the Midwest looks great. And then we are gonna have some unsettled weather for the next couple days over into the west and the Pacific Northwest and the Northern Rockies. Um, Montana can have some, could have some severe weather going on this Tuesday. Um, and then coming into Wednesday and Thursday, the storm system is gonna move slightly, a little bit eastward into the probably um, high plains and Midwest. And then this trough is gonna stick around pretty much along the East Coast for the latter part of the week. By the weekend, it's supposed to be out of here. We're also gonna have a warm, surge of air coming up from the south, so places pretty much along um, the east coast as well are going to warm up and yeah, uh, toward the end of the week. So the next couple of days, it just looks like the two unsettled parts of the country are going to be the Pacific Northwest and the Northeast, and it looks like the rest of the country will be fine. I will be back again in a couple days to give you a couple tips on some um, pool, um, in case you like to go to the pool, or beach. I'll add beach in there as well, so I'll just give you some safety tips on that. And until next time, have a great day, and remember to keep your eye to the sky.